Episode 14 of the Consistency Podcast is here. My name is Stephen Gloucester, and the leadoff question for this episode is if David Fincher or Martin Scorsese could have written a better script than what we saw this week with the Kirk Minahan show. There were so many plot twists mixed in with chaos and comedy that it left us wanting more when Friday's show ended. And now, all of us are anticipating what could potentially happen when the guys are back in studio on Monday. But isn't it so hard to predict what might happen next week as none of us could have anticipated what happened this past week? So instead of prognosticating the future, let's revisit some of those topics. First, what would your response be if Kirk offered you a job like he did with Mike Montante on Friday? Would you immediately say yes? Now, there's a lot to consider before accepting. With housing, logistics, and financial questions needing to be addressed. And of course, there are conversations to be had with family members and significant others. But is not accepting Kirk's offer in a timely manner shooting yourself in the foot? I mean, a job offer from Kirk seems like the lottery ticket any producer or on-air talent could only dream of. As working under Kirk's leadership and the barstool umbrella could open up a person's world to so many possibilities. I mean, think about that. Now, maybe the best play would have been for Mike to accept Kirk's offer and then have a follow-up conversation with him and or Barstool to have any of his questions answered. I think any of us would probably have done that. Now, if Mike or anybody in that position still had concerns then of course it would be understandable to walk away from the negotiating table, even though a lot of people in the KMS world would probably razz that person for not accepting. And you also have to wonder if Mike or anybody in that position would have given any consideration to the current producers When Kirk made his offer. Because aren't you basically sealing somebody's fate? I mean, of course, Kirk isn't going to employ three producers. So Coleman or Gus would have been the odd man out and they would have been whacked. And even though Montante or anybody in that situation wouldn't have been responsible for sending Gus or Coleman to the unemployment line, wouldn't that be on Mike or anybody else's conscience? Wouldn't they have felt bad? I mean, I was raised to believe that if someone offered you something to better your life, you should take it. I mean, who wouldn't? But I know everybody's different. And from what we saw the past week, The current producer's job security isn't really guaranteed with Kirk. So maybe turning down the offer is ultimately a blessing in disguise. But you know what? I guess there really is no perfect answer here. But saying no to Kirk is something a lot of us probably wouldn't have done even if it meant Coleman or Gussie bullshit were sent packing. So I definitely would like to know what people thought about that. Now, let's switch gears a little bit. Wednesday, to me, stood out as one of the better episodes as it seemed like the show got back to being topical and funny after Tuesday's drama with Cullinane and Justin in studio and there was so much going on with the producers and the suspensions that Kirk handed down to them. Now, the first 
30 to 45 minutes of Wednesday's show was filled with producer updates and Mick had some technical issues when he was a producer. But I thought the remainder of the show was the reset button we needed after Tuesday's chaos. And having Daver in studio was a great choice by Kurt. Daver was a breath of fresh, fresh air as he is a down-to-earth, tranquil guy. And up until his puzzling call into the show on Friday, which really didn't make any sense, he seems to have a good rapport with Kirk. And you could tell on Wednesday, there was good conversation throughout the show, and Mick did a good job with bringing some comedy to the entire show as it was developing. And it really seemed like we were getting back to those solid shows that we were used to getting the last few months of 2023. So it seemed like we were back on track a little bit. But then, of course, Thursday happened. I mean, Mick's implosion was shocking. And something none of us could have predicted. And, of course, he was the focal point of the show even when he left and Justin came in. But the person who, aside from Kirk, who really came through on Thursday was Mutt. His conversation about Ronald McDonald and Dave Thomas was absolutely hilarious. And he definitely has that great on-air relationship with Kirk. They have that natural ability to break each other's chops and make each other laugh, which is great. And you have to love it when Mutt is self-deprecating because a lot of people who are in that second or third chair really struggle with that when they're in studio. You know, but of course Mutt sometimes reverts back to that vanilla on-air Mutt at night self. But he's kind of the quintessential second chair personality when he lets his guard down. So you really have to kind of appreciate Mutt for his role on Thursday. And Andy Mayo was better on Thursday than he was in his prior appearances. I mean, sure, there were some moments where he was a boob. His asking Kirk if he gardens and his fixation on if he was going to be killed if Mick came back to the studio with the weapon was typical Mayo. But Andy did a decent job of maintaining self-control And staying out of the way for the most part, especially during Mick's implosion. I mean, imagine if Andy sabotaged that. I mean, that would have been awful. And he was good overall throughout the show, which was good to see, especially for those of us who have our blood pressure raised whenever he's in the third chair. And wasn't Blind Mike returning to the studio on Friday like Mariano Rivera entering the game in the ninth? inning for the Yankees in 1999, he mixed in jokes with clever input throughout the show, and he made any tense situation that was developing seem more relaxed with his easygoing demeanor. His ability to temper what could have been another powder keg situation with the Mick call was excellent, as that show had the potential to go off the rails like Thursday's episode. And of course, Kirk screaming at the top of his lungs makes for good theater. But it can also sometimes be worrisome because you don't know if we're going to be subjected to a quick 45-minute show because he's so pissed. Overall, I thought this was a great week of shows. And it once again proves why Kirk is a Michael Jordan of the podcast world. I don't think anyone from Barstool could create such a compelling show filled with so many wild personalities and storylines. You can see why more people than ever are drawn to this show as it's chaotic in a good way. So let's see what next week brings. I mean, without predicting, the feeling is that Coleman will be contrite on Monday when he returns from suspension. And it seems like Kirk hasn't totally lost faith in him. So hopefully he returns from his suspension in a right frame of mind and will be focused on doing a great job for Kirk. And whatever goes on with Gussie bullshit is for anybody's guess at this point. 
I'm going to stay away from it for now and will reserve my commentary when episode 15 comes out next week. But to wrap up the show, I want to apologize for some inaccurate comments that I made in episode 13 concerning the legality surrounding DUIs and the roles that bartenders play. I mean, I've been sober for 930 days at the time of this recording, and I definitely should have reviewed this law before talking about it. So I definitely want to give credit to Justin for pointing out my mistake on Twitter. He had every right to do so, and it was definitely a learning lesson that some examples should be left on the cutting room floor. And I can only promise to be better in the future, especially when it comes to subjects that I'm, I'm really not well versed on. So you'll see an improvement there. And lastly, I want to thank everybody for their continued support of the show. Episode 13 was the most viewed on YouTube. And the feedback that I get from people, both good and bad, it means a lot to me. And I can't tell you how appreciative I am of everybody who gets in touch with me. I mean, it really does mean a lot. From the bottom of my heart, it does. So I hope everybody has a great weekend. I hope you guys have an amazing upcoming week. And I'll talk to you soon.